In this video, we're going to study some basic properties of the Jth order statistic. We will primarily reuse the settings, the notations, and the hypotheses from part one. For your convenience, we're going to put the link to the first video in the description. Let's just briefly recall that the Jth order statistic denoted by capital X sub parentheses J is just the Jth smallest of the random variable X sub one, X sub two, dot dot dots, X sub n. Recall that these n random variables are supposed to be independent and identically distributed. The Jth order statistic is in general interesting to study. But one of them is used more extensively than the other in general. It is the so-called sample median. Let's recall the definition. When a sample of 2n plus 1 random variables is observed, the n plus 1 smallest is called the sample median. In plain words, the sample median is just the value that is at the middle of this collection of samples if we order the sample from small to large. For instance, let's consider five random variables. If a sample is observed as capital X1 equals 8, capital X2 equals 6, capital X3 equals 11, capital X4 equals 4, and capital 5 equals 5. Then the question is, what is the sample median of this given sample? To find the sample median, we would like to order the samples from small to large so that we will have 4, 5, 6, 8, 11. And the sample median is just the one at the middle, which is precisely just capital X sub parentheses 3 equals 6. Let's mention that in this example, the number of random variables is 5. So n is in fact given by 2 because 5, that's equals to 2 times your n, which is 2 plus 1, and n plus 1, which is the index for the random variable at the middle, is given by n plus 1 equals 3. The fundamental technical question that we like to investigate is, what is the probability density function of the Jth order statistic? To answer this question, we're going to use the general approach. Namely, we're going to integrate out all other variables in the joint density function for the order statistics, except the Jth variable. Before we carry out the integration, we would love to recall two useful facts. The first fact is the joint density function for the order statistics is equals to n factorial times the product of f sub x1 times all the way down to f of x sub n, when x sub 1 is less than x sub 2 dot 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 less than x sub n, and 0 elsewhere. And the second fact is just the well-known results that the probability density function f is just the derivative of the distribution function capital F. Now we start to integrate the joint density function to find the density function for the j order statistic. We choose to integrate in the order from x sub n to x sub 1, since x sub j is not being integrated. To emphasize this fact, we will write up the variable x sub j plus 1 and the variable x sub j minus 1 at the middle of the integrator. We only need to worry about the parts of the function, which is not zero. And in that part, the expression of the function is given by this product, 
So we could write up the integrand as n factorial times f sub x1 all the way down to f of x sub n. Again, since x sub j is not being integrated, we would love to write up f of x sub j minus 1 and f of x sub j plus 1 at the middle. But don't forget that f of x sub j is going to be replaced by the true variable of this density function, which is denoted by x. Since x sub j is not being integrated, we would love to write up f of x sub j minus 1 and f of x sub j plus 1 at the middle. But don't forget that f of x sub j is going to be replaced by the true variable of this density function, which is denoted by x. The integration limits could be written up by x sub n minus 1 to infinity for the first variable x sub n and x sub n minus 2 to infinity for the second variable. And this pattern would repeat until the j plus 1 variable. And in that place, we will have the lower limits given by x with the upper limit still given by infinity. Once we get to the j minus 1 variable, the integration limit is going to be changed a little bit with the upper limit given by x and the lower limit given by the next variable, which in this case is j minus 2. And this pattern would persist until the very last or the very first variable, which is your x sub 1. And in that case, your lower limit is going to be negative infinity with your upper limit given still by x. Once we set up the multiple integral, we can start the computation. The product structure of the density function is crucial in our computation over here. For instance, when we're taking care of the first integration, we notice that all terms could be thought as constant, except for the very last term, f of x sub n. Therefore, according to the definition of distribution function, the integration of this density function from x sub n minus 1 to infinity is precisely 1 minus the distribution function capital F of x sub n minus 1. So that would be the outcome of the integration of um, the variable x sub n. The other parts of the integration would just fall into place. When computing the second integration, there are actually two terms having to do with x sub n minus 1. Therefore, we need to make use of a substitution, which was u sub n minus 1 equal to 1 minus capital F of x sub n minus 1. From the fact that we have reviewed at the beginning of the computation, we observe that d of u sub n minus 1 is just equal to negative f of x sub n minus 1 d x sub n minus 1. So the expression could be replaced by simply u sub n minus 1 times negative d u sub n minus 1. With the integration limit replaced by 0 and 1 minus capital F of x sub n minus 2. And this integral is equal to 1 half times 1 minus 
capital F of x sub n minus 2 squared. A similar substitution could be used over and over up to the j plus 1th variable. So we will skip ahead to that part and observe that the integrand is given by 1 over n minus j factorial times 1 minus capital F of x to the n minus j power times the other parts. In the next integration, we will pick up a capital F of x minus capital F of x sub j minus 2. To do with this integration with respect to x sub j minus 2, we will make use of the substitution u sub j minus 2 equal to capital F of x minus capital F of x sub j minus 2. The idea is just the same as in the previous couple steps, and we notice that the u sub j minus 2 is just negative d x sub j minus 2. And this part of the integration is going to be transformed to the integral from capital F of x minus capital F of x sub j minus 3 to 0 of u sub j minus 2 negative d u sub j minus 2. The outcome of this part is just one half times capital F of x minus capital F of x sub j minus 3 squared. A similar trick could be applied in the following couple of steps. So let's just skip ahead to the very last integration, namely the integration with respect to x sub 1. At that stage, we should be left with the integral from negative infinity to x of n factorial divided by n minus j factorial times j minus 2 factorial times f of x sub 1 times capital F of x minus capital F of x sub 1 to the j minus 2 power and the rest of the expression. In this step, we're going to make use of the substitution u sub 1 equal to capital F of x minus capital F of x sub 1. So the integral is going to be transformed to f of x to 0 of this integrand with respect to u sub 1. The final outcome of this integral is just n factorial divided by n minus j factorial times j minus 1 factorial times capital F of x to the j minus 1 power times 1 minus capital F of x to the n minus j power times f of x. In summary, the probability density function of the jth order statistic is just given by this function that we have just derived. To conclude this video, we will look at the following application in terms of the sample median. If a sample of size 3 from a uniform distribution over the interval 0 to 1 is observed, find the probability that the sample median is between 1 fourth and 3 fourth. First of all, we recall that the probability density function for the uniform distribution is just the constant function 1 over the interval from 0 to 1. Consequently, the cumulative distribution function is just 
the integral from zero to x of this constant function. And the outcome is just x. The size of the sample n is three, and the sample median is just a seconds order statistic. So j is equals two. Now the probability density function for the second order statistic is given by three factorial divided by one factorial times one factorial times x to the first power times one minus x to the first power times the constant function one in the interval from zero to one. To find the probability of the median between one fourth and three fourths, we just need to integrate the probability density function from one fourth to three fourths. Through computation, we conclude that the outcome is just 11 over 16. And this concludes our video. Thank you for watching. If you have any question, please let me know in the comment. Until next time, have fun with the math.